Jackie and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because I have vampired myself. Uh, last year I did a tutorial based on Bella Swan and it was very barely there and natural and ever since you guys have been requesting a Bella Cullen look so that is what I'm bringing to you today and I didn't use all the exact products but I will talk about them throughout the tutorial but I did use my own kit on how to recreate this look on yourself. It's so much fun and if you guys try it out be sure to tag me because I would love to see you as a vampire. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to Pose Wigs for sending me this awesome Bella inspired wig. It looks so cool. Like I don't want to take it off. It has so much volume and I just love how it looks. I kind of want to dye my hair this color now. But anyways, make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And before I go, let me know in the comments uh, if you're team Edward or team Bella. I mean, crap, team Jacob or team Edward because I'm team Jacob. I'm in love with him. Uh, I probably asked that in my last tutorial, but let's do an updated poll. Comment down below and let's just get started. Bella was always super fair, but even more so after her vampire transformation. For the base, I'm using MAC Strobe Cream. I love the feeling of this, it adds hydration, and it adds a beautiful glow and is such a nice base to work with. For my shoulders and neck area that will be exposed, I'm adding L'Oreal Magic Lumi Illuminator. This has a bit of a white cast to it and will illuminate the skin and looks gorgeous on its own. And onto foundation, I'm trying out Maybelline up to 24 hour foundation in the shade 102 Fair Porcelain. Most foundation ranges, I've had to add the Body Shop Lightning Drops to get it as pale as I want, but they seem to have expanded their range, so it's super fair and perfect for this look. This is a high coverage foundation, so I'm using it very minimally, patting it into the skin, and Bella's skin does not look like she's even wearing foundation, it's so natural, but we do want to pale out the skin and even it out a bit. In the film, they said they used Chanel foundation, but you don't have to go high end, a BB cream would also work great. Gotta prep the lips with lip balm. The Twilight movies were filmed in Vancouver. I've been to a couple of the locations actually, so I'm using my favorite BC brand, Barefoot Venus, in the scent Maple Blondie, and next the contour. Kristen has beautiful bone structure. I'm gonna add in more sharpness to my face with the Urban Decay Shape Shifter Palette. I'm adding the deepest cream contour high up under the cheekbones. I'm cheating it a little bit and giving myself higher cheeks, and then extending the line further down than normal, and you can see this starts to make the jawline pop a bit more and really matures my face. Sharpening the jawline and adding a bit more of a pointed chin. And now I'm taking the foundation brush and I'm adding a bit of the center shade and dotting this along the cheeks and forehead to break up the perfectly pale complexion, makes our skin appear more natural. We want to define in between the eyes, the bridge and nose, and the tip. I've made my bridge appear more slim, but that's completely optional. And to really give us that glistening vampire glow, I'm using the Gigi Hadid Illuminator in Iridescent. I've been using this a ton in tutorials, it's for sure one of my favorite new products, and I know there's a ton of skin steps today, but just set with a tiny amount of powder. I'm dabbing Essence Press Powder over areas I feel like might crease. This one is brightening like the Tila Clark loose powder they did use in the movie which had violet to it to really add brightness to the skin. This one is $50, but it's super cool and I kind of want to add it to my collection. This next product is also amazing. It is a multi-stick from Bite, so it's a cheek and lip balm, and I've used it to freckle onto the cheeks, and I'm dabbing onto the lips. This is the perfect shade for Bella, and it's called Almond. For Bella's brows, they are quite far apart and give her a really beautiful opened up face, but my brows are closer together, so I'm going to cheat this and just make the head of the brow a little bit arched outwards like hers, and I'm going to keep them fairly straight and shorter. I'm using some Kiss Professional products today. This company is really quality from what I've tried so far, and this is the Top Brow Fine Preci Precision Pencil and Brunette, and it's only $9. So now on to the fun part, the gorgeous eye makeup. The matte shades, I'm using the same palette I used in my first Bella tutorial, the Too Faced Natural Mattes, as they have the perfect warm tones we want. First up, I'm taking Nudie to deepen up the inner eye and give more depth to the eye sockets. Start to build with honey butter in the crease in a rounded shape. Tiny bit of chocolate cookie for added warmth, more in the center of the crease. Pop on a matte highlight from the palette as well. And finally, Sexpresso on the outer V to deepen it up. This is super simple, just work with a bit of shadows at a time and blend out. I think it's so pretty on its own, but we are going to add to this and really give some extra sparkle. So next up is a gorgeous pigment from MAC. 
These do have fallout, so it's best to use a bit of MAC Fix Plus or some dampness to your brush, uh, but check out this beautiful shade. This is called Copper Sparkle. Back to MAC, I wanted a bit more depth, so I took Antiques and faded this over the matte shades in the outer corner, and this is beautiful, one of my top shades, that's why I've used it so much, and I'm also dragging this under the bottom half of the lash line. And showed on screen was also a Kiss product that works as a dupe, and now with the Kiss shade 24 karat, I'm going to add this right under the bottom lash line and smoke out, and also add a touch to the upper crease. And uh, the shadows are really buttery and beautiful, so I'm really impressed by them. And last step that makes the eye look really unique is by adding a frosty silver to the inner corner mixed in with all the warm tones. I'm taking Kiss Golden Shade and applying to my lash line with a bit of MAC Fix, Mac Fix Plus. This creates a really pretty golden sheen right in the center of the eye and really makes them sparkle, especially when we put mascara on. I'm going to add Revlon's new liner, which I actually love guys, it's really easy to create a minimal line along the lash line, so I shake it and then apply um, with like no pressure at all and just let the roller ball do its work, and I'm going from right in the inner corner all the way to the end of the lash line, not really thickening up the line or anything and just tapering it out naturally. And back with the Too Faced Natural Matte Palette, I'm taking Sexpresso to fade it so it's not too harsh. Curl the lashes, and for mascara, I'm using one of my favorites for natural but to fine lashes. You can layer this up, but for me, I don't quite have the length or fullness, so I'm going to use Benefit Going Solo Lashes. I'm obsessed with Benefit Lashes, and the packaging is just amazing. And then with a bit of the Benefit glue, I'm popping on about five to each eye. And once we have that dried, I'm going to curl those lashes together very lightly, and then add mascara to blend them, and this makes such a difference. Finally, on the eye, I needed to brighten the inner corner like Kristen, or Bella I should say, and this is another MAC pigment in the shade Vanilla like I used in my Victoria's Secret runway look. Back with the Almond Multi Stick from Bite on a lip brush, deepening up the lip. I like to use a lip brush because it makes it so it's applied a bit more sheer and still allows some natural variation. And then with Dallas Blush from Benefit, I'm going to taper out the edges of the lips for some more dimension and you can leave it here or bring in some peach to the very center of the lips. It seemed to have a bit of an ombre look to it but it's probably just because she was filming in the cold but that's how I'm recreating it and actually thinking about it a lot was done with the green screen but anyway her lip looked really natural. gotta do some touch-ups and oh my gosh you guys I'm obsessed with this look I hope you love it it's glam but still wearable it does not look like a mask uh, just glamorous and wearable so I hope you liked it and to add that newborn vampire glam let's add contacts I have never worn contacts before and this was a struggle to put them in but once they were in they were actually really comfortable so I'll have a link down below to the company that sent me these Thank you so much, they worked perfect for the look, and also I'll talk about the wig a little bit, which was also gifted and by Pose Wigs. So here's a look at the wig. I have already applied it by braiding my hair into Dutch braids and then pinning them around my head. I didn't even use a wig cap, I probably should have, but I popped it on and I'm just brushing up the curls. This has a Swiss lace front to it, so I just trimmed the lace and I really love how this looks. It does look like natural hair, the only thing that looks I guess less natural is because it has so much volume but I kind of love it I did not want to take it off but I, I had a lot of fun switching up my hair color for this look I'm adding some hairspray just to keep some flyaways down because I am going to go out in the cold and I want to keep my hair as perfect as I can so let me know in the poll if you prefer my hair as auburn or if you like the steeper brunette Finally, for the outfit, I found this cropped green sweater, super similar to the film, off ASOS. And ASOS has so many cool, unique pieces, so I check out that site all the time when I'm looking for character recreations. And my shirt I got actually when I was trying to film my Miley Cyrus A Party in the USA look, so I'm just re-wearing that, but any navy top that you have tied will do. And to top it off, I have this gorgeous faux leather jacket as well as these heeled boots from Lulu's and I'll have as much as I can listed down below if you want to recreate this Bella look.
watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my very own vampire transformation. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Also, like I was saying before, if you choose to recreate this makeup look, then definitely tag me on Instagram. I love to see your guys' recreations and use the hashtag jmakeupday. It's a really fun hashtag because you can scroll through and see other people's recreations, give them a like, and see all of my different makeup looks if you want some quick inspiration in the morning. So again, I hope you enjoyed. I had so much fun with this and I actually have a couple more pieces to show you. So this was another top that I thought about wearing for this video and it's a really pretty uh, silky blouse and it's the same gorgeous green color that Bella wears and I think it would look amazing with this jacket so I will have links down below to these pieces and finally last but not least this is a scent that I picked out for this look this is actually my Christmas present but I opened it early for today's video and this is Charlotte Tilbury's scent of a dream and this is a florally woodsy perfume which is perfect for this look and it's my ultimate favorite I love this scent so Check it out if you can. If you are in Toronto, there is um, Charlotte Tilbury at Nordstrom. I didn't know that for some reason. So if you didn't know that, now you know, but definitely try this out. It's a gorgeous bottle and I think it totally completes this Bella look and is gonna be my go-to fragrance. As always, you can find me on Instagram under Jackie Wire. So make sure you're following me for more updates and I'll see you in my next video.